Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Hey everyone, I'm back. Oh hey gangs, how was your how did your walk go? Um yeah, pretty well. Um it was a very stark contrast with the walks that I normally done during this cold snap. Yeah, James, and I've also been back from the game shop, and apparently they want us to give you this letter. Okay, okay, then let's have a read it then. Dear James and Miles, we are writing this letter shortly after hearing the great news about your CT scan and the effectiveness of your medication increase, which should have taken full effect by now. If you're not currently undertaking any review projects, we would like to reinstate the review request for Sonic Frontiers that we have done in November. Miles, we have offered you a substantial discount for a copy of Battlefield 2042 as a welcome home gift. Maybe try to persuade James to undertake this review to return the favour. We are looking forward to this review being posted on the channel. Your sincerely, Greg and Caroline. Well, you know what? I uh, might as well go ahead and do it. What is up everyone? This time I review the latest addition to Sega's long-running popular gaming franchise. Can Sonic speed his way to victory? Or will the police stop him from going over 150 times the speed limit? Well, without further ado, let's find out. Right, first off, big shout out to Carolyn from Game for the request to do this game in the first place. Shortly after the PC upgrade was fitted for my birthday in November, and she immediately requested for me to review this game. Unfortunately, that was the day before the epilepsy clinic appointment, and the difficult decision was made to temporarily and indefinitely suspend reviews. So Carolyn, once again, I appreciate your patience. Finally, I ask for both Sonic and Tails to both leave the room to eliminate any corporate bias. So you two had better head off to Greg's and go and enjoy your hot chocolate. Thanks James, see you later. Oh by the way Tails, hmm? can you just buy me a nice chocolate star biscuit? If there's any money left over, you got it. Right, with all of this aside, let's get into this review. In the gaming industry today, there are very few icons that truly stood the test of time. Examples of these icons would be Link from Legend of Zelda, which started in 1986. Mario, named after Nintendo's angry landlord. By the way guys, fun fact, did you know the original name from Super Mario was Jumpman? And of course, Sonic the Hedgehog. The speedy blue hedgehog made its mark as a launch title for the Sega Genesis in June 23rd, 1981. Another fun fact for you guys, did you know that Sonic was not originally to be a hedgehog? During the design phase of the Sega Genesis classic, our protagonist was originally to become a rabbit, called Needlelegs. Ironically enough, the name is a literal Japanese translation to the word hedgehog. Not kidding guys, not kidding. Also, did you know that Sonic's first love interest wasn't Amy? The original character design for Sonic was he was supposed to be in love with a blonde woman called Madonna. Of course, the original concept was scrapped by Sega of America to create a more family-friendly feeling to the franchise. However, in recent times, the franchise has been in decline. As a case in point, the subpar Sonic Forces, which was loathed by both critics and the community. However, there is the odd entry or two which stood against the trend. For example, Sonic Mania, which was the highest rated Sonic game in 15 years, released in 2017. This particular entry of the series takes place in the Starfall Islands. Our antagonist, Dr. Eggman, travels to the islands to discover the secrets related to chaos. His plan backfired is now uploaded into an artificial dimension called Cyberspace. We've got the Sonic Fortress with you to bring my childhood terror system shock. Our speedy blue protagonist finds himself in the Starfall Islands by being sucked into a wormhole. Guided by a mysterious voice, it is up to you to explore the open environment, defeating titans, and most importantly, to save his friends and to put it stop yet another one of Dr. Reckman's plans for world domination. The accessibility scores are as follows. To kick things off visibility, give it 10. Although there is no colorblind mode present in its interface, but there is very little need for one. There are no color coded elements that can cause issues for a colorblind player. Next up on ability, give it 9.5. In this game, subtitles are enabled by default. However, that's simply not good enough. 
The golden solution for players with hearing impairments is to have a subtitle function in their options menu, which can be enabled and disabled on the fly, not simply shoved in front of your face. Next up, Mobility Gaming 11. For the PC version which we used to test this game, when playing with a keyboard and mouse, the key layouts can be completely customized via the control sections of the options menu. As part of the course for a Sonic the Hedgehog game, there are controller support available. When playing with a controller, the bottom layout can be completely customized. On top of that, you can set the camera to automatically follow Sonic as he travels the open world section. Seriously guys, more on that in a minute. To a player with a mobility impairment, you'll be able to play this game with minimal issues. Last and certainly by no means least, gameplay give it in. In short, this game is a complete new direction of a traditional Sonic game. This is mostly due to the game's open zone style of gameplay. Instead of having a traditional hub where you can select which stage you want to play, similar to the Xbox 360 classic Sonic Unleashed, this is a completely different ball game altogether. Instead, you are placed in a vast open world environment. This environment is full of secrets, bosses which seems to be ripped from a Souls game, only a lot more easy to beat. No guys, seriously, I've cleared the first NG in Dark Souls 3. Not kidding guys, not kidding. Aggression in this game is somewhat repetitive. You complete objectives in cyberspace stages for vault keys. You then use um, these keys to unlock vaults which contain Chaos Emeralds, which are necessary to defeat massive bosses known as Titans. Similar to a Dark Souls game, this game rewards you for taking your time and exploring the environments, leveling up your character's attack and defense powers, which in turn helps you even the odds. In short, if you rush into these Titan battles, the boss will kick your ass and you're gonna have to take it. In summary, Sonic Frontiers feels like revolutionary for the series as a whole. The overall style of gameplay is an entirely new take on the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise as a whole. Instead of going from level to level reaching the exit, as I've said, the game is rewards for you for taking your time and exploring the open environment. If you're a Sonic the Hedgehog enthusiast, such as me, but is sick and tired of playing the same style of game with every entry, this game is highly recommended. And the overall score is 101.25%. To you guys in the next review, Spartan Commander 1998. Roll out Spartan Century. Hey Tails, it's me, reviews done.